morning star. The psalmist says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And he said, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. I mean, when praises go up, that the Lord will come in. And he will come in and visit among his people. I don't know about you, but I just believe that we're very thankful, <clears throat> thankful unto God this morning for just allowing us to be here on this day, on his time, and in his place. God bless you, and God keep you. Give honor to God this morning. this morning. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. And we're just going to thank him right now. Can we thank him right now? We're going to thank him right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, which are in heaven, we come before you once again, Father, as humble as we know how, to say thank you for watching over us last night as we slept and slumbered. God, we come this morning 
thanking you that you enabled us to get up, come out to the house of worship. Yes, sir. And God, we come at this time asking that you would please remember the sick and the shed in. Lord, please remember the homeless. Lord, remember the ones that are mentally ill. Lord, remember the families that have lost loved ones. And God, we come at this time that we just want to say thank you for being so good to us. And Lord, we thank you that you enable us to be able to come to the house of the Lord, worship, fellowship with one another. And God, we don't take anything for granted, small, medium, or large. We appreciate and thank everything. Father, we come this morning also, God, asking that you would order our steps, Father. And Lord, we come just continue begging you for mercy. Father, we come at a time now that we ask that you would bless this city and state. And Lord, bless this nation. And Father, regardless of how the outcome was Tuesday night, we know who's in control. And God, we're going to keep coming to you, telling you what our situation are. And Lord, we pray that you change Trump hard. We pray, Father, that he can start viewing other people as a human being and you don't have to be rich. God, we thank you. And Lord, if we had a billion tongues, we couldn't thank you for how good you've been to us. Somebody thank you this morning because they had a financial situation and you worked it out. Thank you. Someone was sick and needed to be healed. And they kept talking to you, Father, and you healed them. We thank you for all that, Father. God, we I also come this morning asking that you would bless the pastor of this church. Bless this congregation. Bless each and every home, Lord, that have come out today. And Lord, we just thank you for just being so good. And Lord, we ask that you would create in us a clean, pure heart and renew a righteous spirit within us. And oh Lord, when our time is up down here on earth, Father, we ask that you have a seat in your kingdom for us. This prayer we pray in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We want to thank you for joining in with our devotion. And let us just take everything to the Lord. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I am DeAsia, and this is Monique Davis. I'm her mother. <laughs> Good morning. We're asking all who are visiting today, would you please stand? Amen. Well, we want to welcome you and whoever else is here visiting and those that are online. We welcome you today and we hope and uh, that you will find a home here at Morningstar Baptist Church. And we're here every Sunday at 10 o'clock, and you're welcome to come back, and we thank you for choosing Morningstar as your choice of worship today. May you have a blessed day in the Lord.
That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my
You ought to say amen to that this morning. I heard uh, Deacon McNair preaching, teaching a Sunday school lesson this morning. And he was talking about praise. That's the praise he was talking about. Uh, when I consider the Lord and all his benefits uh, through the storm and through the rain, my heart uh, is filled with his praise. Uh, and in this case, I don't have to have any symbol. I don't have to have any brass. Uh, but I lift up with the words of my mouth, uh, my praise, uh, my glory, my honor unto him. Uh, for truly he's able and he will deliver. God, our Father, we come once again, Master, thanking you afresh, oh God, uh, for all your rich and many blessings. For we recognize that every good and perfect gift comes from the up above. God, I ask now, Master, that you would, oh God, allow your spirit, your anointing, oh God, to flow within this house, oh God. Master, we need you and we cannot get along without you. Oh God, guide us, oh God, order our steps according to your word, oh God. Master, let your word go forth and not return unto you void. Oh God, but let it accomplish all that you set it forth to do. God, we love you and we thank you in advance. For we ask this in the name of he that is able. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I invite your attention this morning again to the book of Revelations chapter 3. And I want to begin reading at verse 14. I didn't get a chance to finish this on last Sunday. And uh, I solicit your prayers as we return to this text. Reading from Revelations chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. <clears throat> and unto the angel of the church of Lacedaemon. Laodicea, excuse me, right? These things said the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have needs of nothing, and knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. He says, I cause thee to buy, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that they may see it. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. For behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Amen. Thus in that the reading, you may be seated in his presence.
just a few minutes, I ask that you would pray with me as we preach from the subject, Stale Religion, Stale Religion. My brothers and sisters, the writer of the book of Hebrews, the book of Revelations, brother, is John, and we remember in Sunday school that John had been placed on the out island of Patmos and uh, John uh, there in his in his place where God had sent him found himself in conversation with God. God tells him to write these things down. God gives him his testimony through the prophet uh, through the counsel of John. Uh, but even before God tells him he asked John to look among the churches, and what do you see? And then God begins to lift up uh, as a sample, if you would, of the seven churches of Asia Minor. These churches, in some sense, still exist today in that area. Uh, but uh, God, through the midst of this, he says something specific to each of these seven churches. He opens in this particular passage as he shares to the angel of the church, to the leadership, to the guidance of it. He says, uh, in not, sense, not in the sense that he does the other six churches, he opens with a compliment. He, he, he shares with them something good that they have been doing. But in this particular uh, church, he does not open with a complimentary phrase, uh, uh, but yet he, he shares with them what he sees in the midst of this church. And my brothers and sisters, I would argue uh, that God looks down upon this church because he suggests to us that there's something about their religion. And the Bible says that he uh, he, 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 he shares with them that I'm speaking to you because I am one that was there from the beginning. He says, I am here. I am he who is the, he says, these things said, the amen is what he calls himself. Uh, for he was the creator. He was a part of creation and all that he did, he could ultimately say amen for. He says, I am the faithful. I've not only been faithful to the nation of Israel, but I've been faithful to you. And my brothers and sisters, I believe that it speaks to us today as well, that if we don't know nothing else, we know that God has been faithful unto us. The Bible says that he declares that not only am I faithful, not only am I the amen, he says, but I am the true witness. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, some folk, they tell you what you want to hear, or what they think you want to hear. But God says, I am the true witness. I, I'm going to tell you the truth, yeah, and nothing but the truth. And the Bible says he says that I was there from the beginning of creation. I myself am a part of the Godhead, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And so he, he, uh, he shares with them uh, the sense of what he has conquered. Uh, and uh, he shares with them uh, uh, that God himself is still in control. And I want to know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes uh, even after election results, you wonder and you worry, but I want to tell you that God's still in control. Uh, uh, listen, nothing happens in the White House that God won't allow to happen. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, not only in the White House, but even in Jackson's house. Uh, listen, God is still in control. Uh, he's going to bring it to pass so that we may see him. But all oh, my brothers and sisters, I want to argue that he gives a warning. He says, uh, I, I want to share with you that I'm in control, but I see some stuff. Uh, and he, he argues that, that, that church uh, at Laodicea, he says, you become complacent. You come and uh, you're doing some of the right stuff, uh, 
but you're doing it for the wrong reason. Huh? And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, listen, you can do a thing, but, but if you're doing it for wrong reason, God doesn't like it at all. It, it, is, it is better that you not touch it at all. Huh? He says that uh, you become complacent. You, you know what religious uh, things to do. You know when to turn and when to clap. You know uh, how things ought to flow. He says, but I have a complaint against you. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, will God have a complaint on your row? Uh, uh, will God have a complaint this morning in your own testimony? And he, he argues here. He says that I have a complaint here. And he says, uh, uh, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. My brothers and sisters, uh, <clears throat> uh, last Sunday I didn't get a chance to deal with this piece uh, but but this is an important piece of the text, y'all. He says that I, I, I would, I would, I wish so uh, that you were either cold or hot. Uh, listen, uh, I, I, I believe I have it on good authority. Uh, if I ask the tea drinkers in here and the coffee drinkers in here, uh, 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 either you want your tea hot or you want it cold. Well, but you don't want it lukewarm. It, it, it doesn't have the same feeling. It doesn't have the same taste. Either one or the other. Uh, uh, and God says in, in a matter of, of imagery, he says, I would that you be hot, uh, such on fire, or I would that you be cold. But don't give me lukewarm stuff. Huh? Listen, Jesus uses this uh, terminology because they were used to this in their community. Uh, Laodicea was a rich, refining place. They had money. They had technology. Uh, they had medical resources that the others across the world would come and buy from them. Uh, they had this special salve uh, that they created there. And, and, and all across, the people would come and, and purchase this. And, and, and they had a, a, a strong medical uh, background in this area. And, and, and their church sat right in the midst of all of these great things that were happening. But the problem they had is that they had a problem with water. The water came to them through these uh, stone aqueducts. And, and, uh, and on one side, uh, uh, the town was about seven miles away. Uh, they had hot springs. And, and all that they did in building up the SAF and making medical uh, uh, achievements was through the hot water that they would use in that area. And it would fondle down uh, to Laodicea. On the other side was a uh, community about 10 miles away, and their water was cold. It, uh, it, it, was, it was refreshing to drink, and, uh, and it would draft down. And so by the time the two met, Laodicea had hot and cold mixed together, and it made it lukewarm. And listen, and they didn't want, listen, my brothers and sisters, I want to argue uh, that God is challenging us, uh, that there's some of us on fire for the Lord, and there's some of us are producing cold springs, and when it all comes together, it's lukewarm. But he says that there's got to be a change in us. He says, he says some, 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 some awful imagery here. He says that uh, if it's lukewarm, he says, I will spit it out of my mouth. God, God says, I have such disdain for this that it's no use for the kingdom. It is as, it's as if he says, I will, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. My brothers and sisters, I would argue, I would argue that it is time that we do an inspection within ourselves and see where we are with God. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, he doesn't tell, tell this to them for naught. He says, I tell you this because I love you. And he says, he, he goes even further. He says, I love you so much because you say that I'm rich. You say that I increased with goods and I have need of nothing. Uh, he gets to the outline of all that they say about themselves. And my brothers and sisters, I would argue, my brothers and sisters, when God 
comes to a point that he lies a critique upon you. And yet, yet you can't do anything about it because this is the way God sees it. And God, God says that, I, I see, I see all of these things. And he says, and yet, even now you are blind and you are, are naked and you don't even know it. My brothers and sisters, I, I, I would argue this. this. This sermon may not be for everybody. But listen, my brothers and sisters, if by chance you do self-inventory and find that you got some of this, thing, listen, and, and I won't tell y'all, uh, 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 I had to go through it before I preached it. Yeah. God, God took me that I may see myself through the midst of this. But, but, but listen, listen, y'all, I would, I, what I love about God, and y'all, I'm almost finished, y'all, is that God never gives a critique without an answer. He never tells you just how bad you are without an answer for it. He, he says that, that, listen, this is what I would do. He says, I counsel you that you would buy from me. He says, the great riches, the great refineries that you want, he says, I got it all. I, I've had it from now even throughout eternity. That great stuff that you think you want, if you seek me first, I'll add it unto you. He says that you're walking around him blind and, and, and you got all the staff in the world to, to cure blindness. He says, but if you join in with me, I'll give you something that you don't even have to have sap to do it. God says, I'll open up your eyes that you may see like I see. God, 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 God says that I, I, I desire these things for you that you may be clothed. And yet, yet the people of that time were clothed in the rich coloredness and fine materials. And he says, all of that just exposes your nakedness. And I want to argue, y'all, that's the reason why, you know, folk tell me that, that you got to wear this, and you got to wear that to church. But I want to argue, y'all, God ain't interested in your clothing. Because he sees all through out what you wear. He's trying to identify your heart. Where is your heart in the midst of this? It's a terrible thing if you're walking around with a $500 bag. It's a terrible thing if you're walking around with $300 J. Renee shoes. Listen, it's a terrible thing if you're walking around with a $600 hat. And yet in your heart, you don't love Jesus Christ. But I argue, my brothers and sisters, he makes this thing clear that if you seek me, if you, if, you, if you rely on me, I will make provisions on your behalf. Well, help me, Jesus. Uh, what is it that I shall do? How can I get from this place of complacency? He says, as many as I love, I rebuke. He says, he says, he says but, 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 but all you got to do he doesn't list up five or six things. He says, if you get one thing right, we'll turn it around. <laughs> Jesus says, all you got to do is to come to his zillionness of who he is. He says, and then repent. And I, I know, I know, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, some of us say we've been, we've been Christians a long time. Uh, I've been doing this a long time. And uh, why do I need to repent now? What do I have to repent for? Uh, but listen, my brothers and sisters, the repent is not just words, but it's actions. Uh, it's a decision that I make that I'm going to turn. And my brothers and sisters, if you do serious examination, all of us got something we need to repent for her. All of us have some issues in our lives. And, 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 and sometimes, y'all, we can get caught in stuff and been in it so long, it just looks and feels normal. But God says that if you would come to a point and repent, and God says, God says, if you repent, he says, then, then I am committed to you for the rest. He says, behold, I stand at the door. And he says, I'm, I'm knocking. And uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, 
It's something about God. That God can show up in some of the strangest places. And even when we're trying to run from God, God will show up. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't believe me, uh, ask the man that got in the boat the other day and, and tried to run from God. And uh, supposed to go to Nineveh. Now he's going to another, another place. Uh, uh, but listen, listen, God can show up right where you are. He says, he says here, he says, behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. But you know, one thing about God, all throughout the text, God gives us free will. God gives us a choice. You can choose to go right or you can choose to go left. But, but, but God does not make you do one way or the other. But it's your choice. And, and he says, he says, I stand at the door. He says, but if you open the door, what that says to me, y'all, is that some stuff, you got to be a part of it. You've got to open the door. And listen, and don't you be jealous because God is blessing me and you're not getting the same kind of, maybe you hadn't opened the door. Maybe you have not repented. Maybe you have not turned around. God says, I stand at your door. I'm knocking at the door of your heart. And he says, if you, if you allow me, he says, I'll come in and I'll sup with you and you can sup with me. And uh, 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 there's so many things happens when we are supping together. Uh, we talk about stuff when we're at the table, y'all. Uh, we lay our issues down at the table. And, and, and my brother and sister, he says, he says that if you open the door, he says, not only will I come and sup you, he says, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he will be with me. That, that means God is saying that if you, if you repent, if you turn, if you open the door, if you let me in, if you let me sit down and talk to you all about it, he says, then you now will be with me. And I want to argue, y'all, we don't have to wait till we die to be with God. We can do that while we're in the land of the living. Listen, seek him, uh, 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 ask of him, pray to him. God can literally... Turn it around. But I want, I want you to be aware that God does see. That God does know. And he, he knows what, what others don't know about you. There's a, a young man who was playing uh, uh, college football. And he was a running back. And, and in, in practice, he hardly ever did the runs right. And, uh, uh, and, and he, was, he would settle for just getting by with whatever he needed to do. And uh, uh, that was the major game at the end of the year. They were playing their wildest uh, competitor. And, and, uh, and, and, and would you know it, he was the fourth running back, uh, fourth string running back. And, 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 and the first, second, and third running backs were hurt in the same game. And so they had to call up this young man for him to play. And, and Coach knew his, his work and, 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 and didn't really want to call him, but he was all that he had. And that young man got on the field, and he made touchdown after touchdown in the fourth quarter. He scored time and time again. And they were all yelling, and, and, and people in the stand wondering, who is this man, and how come he hadn't been on the field before? And so coach called him over at the end of the game and said, son, I watched you in practice and you ain't never played like this. What made you play like this today? He says, well, coach, my daddy was blind. My daddy never made it to my games. He never saw me play. But he died the other day. And for the first time, my daddy got to see me play. <laughs> he said, for the first time. God, my daddy got to see me. I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, don't wait to somebody that God already knows. Your daddy is already watching over you. What are you playing? How are you in the game? How are you finishing for the Lord? He's watching you. 
What will he find in your life? But listen, the good news is, he says, if you repent, he says, repent, because one Friday evening, I died for your sins. One Friday evening, I, I knew that John, I knew that Lucy would stand in need of me. He says, I know, I, he died for our sins while we were yet sinners. But the, blood, the glory of it, that he rose on the third day morning with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. And because he lives, <laughs> You and I can live with him. You and I can be with him. Because he lives, uh, I want to encourage you to trust him. Trust him with that stuff that you've been trying to get rid of. Trust him with the burdens that you carry. And he's saying that, come, my yoke is easy, my burdens are light. Trust him today and watch him make your life brand new. God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you, O oh God. With the fruits of our lips, we bless your name, O oh God. And, O oh God, I thank you that you are such a loving God, that you care enough to tell us what we stand in need of, to show us the error in our ways, O oh God, and to bring us to an ark of safety. God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will receive our repented hearts this morning. Oh, God, as we look where we've been and what we've done, oh, God, it all hadn't been pleasing in your sight. But, oh, God, I, 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 come, I am convinced to make a change today. And, oh, God, I ask that you come into my life, oh, God. You change and make a difference in me. I hear you at the door, and I'm opening the door. And I invite you to come in, Lord Jesus rule and reign in my life today. Make my life brand new, oh God. And God will be faithful to give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The door of the church is open. I invite you to come by letter. Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. Uh, this invitation is extended to you. And I invite you to come at this time. You don't have to fix yourself up just as you are. Won't you trust him and watch him make your life brand new? Choir is going to sing, and we invite you to come to Jesus just now. for you. Won't you trust him today? Sisters, just a few announcements as we 
prepare to leave this morning. I do want to remind you that we will be celebrating our 99th uh, church anniversary on the fourth Sunday of this month as November 24th during our morning worship service. And we ask that you come share with a friend, a uh, family member, invite them to come and share with you. Uh, we Again, we ask each member that you would give $100 in support of the church anniversary uh, this year. Also, uh, we are preparing to give out uh, turkeys and hams at Christmas this year, and uh, I ask that you... And uh, uh, if you would like to receive a turkey or ham, if you would see your deacon or any of our deacons, and they will put your name on the list, the deadline for that will be Sunday, November the 24th, the fourth Sunday of this month. Uh, but if you're interested, if you would see them, uh, contact either your deacon or a deacon. We'll make sure that your name is put on the list. The giveaway would be uh, November, I mean, excuse me, December the 14th, 14th. 14th. Yeah, 14th, uh, and uh, and we'll be sharing more more about that. Uh, also, um, I want to uh, share with you in, in the form of prayer that uh, uh, Brother um, Patrick Barnes uh, passed on on last week, and his services will be on Saturday, November the 16th, I believe it is. Uh, and uh, uh, at People's Funeral Home, uh, I ask that you would pray for that family. And uh, 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 Patrick was the uh, son of, uh, of Sister Barnes, uh, uh, Lorraine Barnes. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, I ask that you would keep that family in, in your prayers on today. Uh, I ask also that you would remember in prayer, Little Master. Uh, Samaji Ward, uh, he's been, uh, 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 hopefully a spot is going to open up for him there in, um, in Louisiana and uh, that will help to uh, 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 bring about cure for his disease. And so I ask that you would pray for he and his family on today. Also, uh, the... Um, The Kapaya Ministerial Alliance is, is setting up to uh, give away clothing to those persons that, that are in need. If you simply see our secretary, if you have a desire or you need that, uh, we will make sure that they get your name. If you just simply contact the secretary uh, of the church. Uh, on my way out of here, y'all, uh, would you please allow me to recognize all of our veterans? Tomorrow is Veterans Day. All of our veterans, would you stand, please? Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We thank God for you, and we thank God for your service uh, that you have contributed to make this nation uh, what it is today. <laughs> Amen. Uh, would you stand with us? Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for all our eyes have seen, all our ears have heard. We thank you for the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. Oh God, I ask in the name of Jesus uh, that you would lay your hands upon those that are sick, oh God. Oh God, touch their bodies right today, oh God. You know it, oh God. You know all about it. And oh God, we pray for your divine intervention, oh God. And then we pray for those families that are bereaved. And we pray for your comfort and your strength, oh God. And God, uh, I ask now that you would dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Go with us, stand by us, guide us, and strengthen us. For it's all in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. Go in his peace on today.